Today at ShopDap.com, we talk about the craziest things we found at SEMA. So if you know anything about SEMA, you know there's just some ridiculous builds here. Yeah, people spend a lot of money and a long time prepping for SEMA, so a lot of the cars, trucks, whatever they build, and some things are really outlandish. So we're gonna show you what we found, starting with this semi-truck behind us. So the semi-truck behind us, is clearly some sort of tractor trailer set up with a jet engine. Quarter mile runs a 9.1 at 157. It's pretty strong. In a semi truck. 9.1 in a semi truck is pretty strong. I wonder if it would have made sense for aerodynamics running when you're running 9.1 to not have a gaping hole in the center of it. No, because it's gotta feed the jet. Oh, well, I guess that's true. I guess these must be for shoots. I don't know if it's for aesthetics, or they, act, well, they, they have this, this trigger cord on them, so they must actually use them. I imagine a tractor trailer running 9.1 at 150 might not stop super well. While these supercars here that are Liberty Walk bag slammed cars may seem crazy, they're pretty standard SEMA cars. Also par for the course when you got SEMA is drifting. There's a couple of different drift and burnout boot pits that you find. Uh, this is the BMW one, Ford has one, and Hoonigan also has one. Yeah, that's just to give you an idea of how big the scale of SEMA is. There's enough space for three different places where people are drifting. Another crazy car, this Mustang 65 with an LSX swap that has three, not, not joking, three superchargers. So here's one, two, and then on the other side, there's a third supercharger. There's your carburetors right here, runs down through there, and 427 engine, which I don't know. They don't have any notes about how much power this makes. It's hard to know if it even runs at this point, um, but the car is insane. We come around back here. It's got these huge slicks. It's tubbed in the rear to allow them underneath of it, and then these wheelie bars with all this beautiful fuel cell AN lines, all that stuff. This thing, even if it doesn't run, this thing is completely gorgeous the way they've accomplished all this stuff. And then what are, are these nitrous bottles? I think that, I think those are nitrous bottles to add to the insanity. They added some nitrous. And right next to it, there's another one. <laughs> That's a, just a different car with basically the same setup. With turbos and stuff. Oh, turbos. It looks like the same builder, supercharger with two turbos. That thing is wild. This is the most ridiculous thing that I think we've seen here. It's got tracks on tracks on tracks on tracks on tracks and tracks. This fender is like up to my head. I wish zone. I wish it had stacks so we can say tracks on tracks. On stacks. On stacks well, on you don't stacks. know that it doesn't. Oh, they're quads with tracks. They're quads with tracks. Yeah, but then there's also the Segway with tracks back here. Okay. You got tracks on tracks on tracks on tracks. Just look at the size of this to even add more to it it's got two rear ends because it's six by six you could have it like this if you don't have the tracks on it you can have six wheels or you can just have tracks and be the coolest kid in town yeah but you can't have the tracks on, on the road you'll ruin them and i bet you these things are mighty expensive it's probably really hard for the steering to deal with too yeah well yeah look at what it has to turn instead yeah. of a tire so, uh, <laughs> And look how long it is. Supra number 236. We have tried to take a picture of every single Supra that we've seen here. There's a shit ton of them. Montage of Supras now. This Jeep behind me, uh, off-road setup. This thing is set up, I assume, to be a rock crawler because the amount of travel that you can see behind me is crazy. This is truly a flex zone. <laughs> <laughs> the thing that's crazy to me is this thing's, I, I assume it's a rock crawler, so they probably use it for that for real, but if we look underneath this thing, it's pretty clean, considering I would not, they clearly probably spent a lot of time cleaning this thing up because there were some there are some videos showing this thing flying in through off-road stuff. 
So someone's been picking dirt out of the, out of this thing for a long time. Full if you get scary. for context, here's my head. Now I'm not I'm not that tall, but I'm also not short either. Last thing. Inside these are uh, levers for a transfer case, and then there's a bunch of buttons in there too. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what all those functions are. This is the true camber gang. So it's it's not the inside camber. It's positive camber. In engine, uh, CTSV engine. So this thing probably is pretty seats. powerful on top of having heated seats. Having heated seats apparently. The next ridiculous thing is this side by side. I don't know if you count it as a side by side anymore, but it's got these ridiculous monster truck tires on it. Chrome everything, even the drive shafts, no Bluetooth drive shafts here. Uh, it does look like it has Bluetooth speakers in the wheel wells. There's a speaker over here. And I, I don't even know how this thing's gonna be able to move with tires this big. These things have like a three cylinder engine that makes like 100 horsepower. Like, I don't even know how this thing would be able to move. It's got speakers under here, around the transfer case. It even has rear steering, I just noticed that. Okay, so this we're in the Factory 5 booth, they make kit cars, uh, and the well, crazy thing, I don't necessarily think that is this model, although it probably will be pretty cool once they release the, information it. about it, but it has this V12 engine, which is a V12 LS engine, which is made by a company in Australia who makes them custom. So we got some details from the guy at uh, Factory 5 who had some information about it, and it's pretty cool setup. They use LS internals uh, for some of the manufacturing process, but obviously the block is custom, crank is custom, to make this work for, for that particular setup. So this is in the Weisco booth. This is that same V12 engine, uh, but they have the head off. So there's this setup uh, without the head on that same V12 LS. This thing may look ridiculous at first glance, but uh, at SEMA it's really kind of a normal build with uh, cool suspension and stuff, you know, a lot of detail, but this doesn't even stand out of the crowd at SEMA, it's pretty wild. So another crazy thing that we saw is, I don't even know, honestly, what this is, it's a Chevy of some kind. This is, look at it, it looks like a Hot Wheels car. It's got giant wheels. It's a short bed version of the El Camino, yeah. It's an early one too, it's got the fins and stuff, but it appears to have some sort of nitrous. It's got like little just buckets, it's got a parachute release handle in there. There's a roll cage. I dig the hood, how it like slopes up over the wheel, everything just cut down. It just screams Hot Wheels car to me, it's super cool. I'm assuming small block, oh it's a dark small block Chevy, yeah. So big supercharger, two carbs. I see the nitrous lines, yeah, that's what these are. So, I like the pinstripe on the hood and on the belt. On the belt? Yeah. Okay, so another over the top vehicle, this armored car. Uh, this thing is pretty crazy. First thing I noticed was the wheels. You see all these, these look like bead lockers built all the way around. Now Max said he thinks that this is, stand, like a lot of military stuff uses this. I assume that it has multiple tires inside of this so that if one gets punctured, the next one underneath takes its place. I, I assume that's the process of how these work. What is this thing used for? Anything that you want. This one is the civilian model, so she's street legal. But uh, they started off, it, it is armored up to 9 mil. Uh -huh. uh, people use it for SWAT, police, uh -huh. military. But this one is anyone yeah, yeah. who wants one can have it. I see. Yeah. So Teradyne is the manufacturer. She starts off as an F450 chassis and they build on top. Our company makes the air compressor systems that run their tire inflation. That's why we get to borrow for the week. So is these are multiple tires built inside here? Is that why they're all bead locked all inside there? It is. It's a bead yeah. lock system. Yeah. Yeah. It's a three-piece Hutchinson tire, so it's actually the same on both sides. She's just flipped on the other right. side for that. Right, one. for the offset. Yes. Yeah. Like. So nice. It's it's very so it's nice. very plush inside of here. This is just in case you you want to get a little air. I imagine this thing probably cost uh, half a million dollars. She starts at 280. Yeah. This model's 375, and then they just go up based on how yeah. much armor you have. Whatever you do, yeah. Oh, yeah. So this thing's bulletproof to 9 mil. Yes, correct. And the windows as well, they'll go up to 50 cal. <laughs> yeah. The windows go up to 50 cal? Yes. So so the 50, 50 cal cows. option, it's a three inch window. Uh -huh. And then this quarter inch plating here is doubled up on the inside for the wow. 50 cal option. Yeah. So this next up in our 
list of unusual builds. Uh, this is a 68, or was a 68 Camaro that, as you see, it's got a 2010 new style Camaro rear end. And apparently it is all wheel drive. They used stuff from a Trailblazer SS for the front. And then up here, it's uh, LS, obviously, because it's Chevy, but it's supercharged, it says it's 800 horsepower. All that was kind of cool is they have the intake manifold on backwards and the intake piping runs down out of the intercooler and up into the firewall. So you don't see any of the piping to the uh, intercooler or throttle body or anything like that. It's uh, just super interesting. You see it's got the 68 front end and it's just a wild car, man. It's all wheel drive, 800 horsepower, 68, 2010. <laughs> It's uh, something else. This is something that used to be popular back in the lowrider days, and it probably still has some following, is lowrider bikes. And so let's check out this absurd. You can see all along here, everything's chromed and gold. It's got lights on it. It also does have some speakers and a system. The, the paint job on this thing alone must be insanely expensive. I'm unsure what's going on here, but I think this thing might just be on air. Yeah, so it's, it's on it's, bags. It's on bags, so. And you got your deck back here? <laughs> important thing whenever you have a bicycle, you have to have an air ride system and a head unit with, with 12 speakers in it and extremely expensive. This is probably like a $3,000 paint job. For just bicycle and more, it's on a TV too. Oh, oh, there's a TV in the back too. There's a TV Ju in Just the on the bicycle. That's the main seat, that's, that's the back that's seat. That's the throne for who yeah. for, rides you around. For I your see. children. So look at this detail. This is the air shock here, and this is a, a hard bent line that runs all the way through the frame here. No, oh, wait, nope. Hey, look at it. It actually runs underneath and has a pattern that flows with this center portion. It's pretty cool. It's got a chrome chain too. Thanks for watching our picks of our crazy stuff that we saw at SEMA. There's so much here we couldn't even get through half of what we saw. Comment with your favorite of our picks of the craziest thing and if you saw something that we missed, make sure you leave it in the comment below.